In this tutorial, we will look at solid editing tools, surface editing tools, and preparing a file for 3D printing. Let's start out by making a solid box. And my grid is set up so that my major grid lines are every 50 feet. So that's a 50 foot by 50 foot box. And I'm going to set the height by typing in the command prompt to 30 feet. Okay, the first solid tool that we're going to look at is a fillet edge. So let's bring out our solid editing toolbar. From the main menu, go to Tools, Toolbar Layout, and from the list, find Solid Tools. From that toolbar, we have a radius fillet. Let's click that button. We're going to select our edge or edges to fill it. And if I type enter, I'm given two points. One at the beginning of the edge and one at the end of the edge. If I for a moment disable my object snaps and my grid snaps, I'll have more flexibility in setting that radius. Now my snaps were set to five feet. So if I turn my grid snap back on, it's snapping at 5 foot increments. So I can set this one to 10 feet, and I'll set this one to 5 feet. I'll press enter. Now, let's take a look at doing a similar fillet, but this time with a surface. So we're going to make a couple planes. We can go up to our main menu, surface plane, corner to corner. And now I need a vertical plane. So I'll go to my main menu, surface plane, vertical. Now if I tried to use my fillet radius from my solid toolbar, nothing would happen. For this, we will need an additional toolbar. So from the main menu, Tools, Toolbar Layout, let's find Surface Tools. And from our Surface Toolbar, we have Fillet Surface. I can set the radius from the command line. I'll set it to 10 feet. I'll select my first surface and my second surface. And that I'll achieve my fillet radius. Okay, so that was a fillet with one radius. I'm going to undo. So now let's look at doing a variable fillet radius. And that's this button here. I select my first surface my second surface and now you see we have exactly what we had before with the solid object we have a radius at the start point that we can edit I can click and drag and we have a radius at the end point now there is an option to do a trim and join because you see this created an additional surface so I can select that and delete it and I'll do my variable radius fillet one more time. And this time from the main command line, I can choose trim and join yes. And then there's always the preview button um, just to give you a better sense of what's going to happen. Okay, let's return our surfaces back to their original rectangular shape. So if you select this, you see that it was trimmed and joined together. We can explode this by clicking on the explode button. We can select the fillet surface and delete it. So now we have these polygonal surfaces. To get these back to rectangular planes, I'm going to use the extend trimmed surface button by right clicking on that button 
I'll select that edge. It's looking for a start point. I'll pick that as my start point and then an end point of the extension. I'll do the same with the vertical plane. Okay, so now those intersect each other, these two planes. And my connect surfaces will basically do a fillet with a zero radius. It's looking for the first surface, the second surface. Okay, and now we have our rectangular planes back. I'm going to move these apart so that I can use a blend surface. So we'll take that one and we'll move we'll move it a distance apart and we'll also raise it up vertically. We'll type in move. Okay, so now we have these surfaces that are a distance apart. Okay, so let's use our blend surface tool. So we'll click on that and it's looking for the segment for the first edge. And you can add additional segments. For now, we'll just use that one segment. We'll press enter. It's looking for the segment for our second edge, which will be that edge. Press enter. And it creates a surface very similar to our fillet surface. Except now I have some adjustments that I can parametrically adjust. And I'm going to uncheck same height shapes. And we can only make these adjustments perpendicular to the edges. And we can do this in a more freeform manner. And it's easiest to disable your snaps, both your object snaps and your grid snap. And then if I select a point, for instance, that point, if I select it, I, as I move my mouse, I'm now controlling that point. Okay, only along that axis and in this case the y-axis which is perpendicular to the edge and then when I'm done I can just click so a little bit more of a freeform method and then I can click OK let's look at applying that blend surface to our solid object okay I'll click on blend surface and I'm going to choose this top edge and then it's looking for direction and then I will press enter because that's the only segment that I want to blend and I'll select my my next edge which will be that one and I'll, I'll point that up toward the other edge I'll press enter. Okay, so you see the blend. This one was pointed up, so that blend works up and down. This one was point, pointed horizontally, so that blend is working horizontally. <clears throat> and I'll do this again uh, with the other direction. So this does a little bit better of a job, I think, explaining blend than we did it with uh, just the surface. So you kind of see what's happening here. Let's cancel that and we'll do that one more time. So I'll keep that one horizontal and I'll also, I'll press enter for the next segment and I'll also choose this one to be horizontal. Enter and you see both of my adjustments for the blend are horizontal. Okay, we'll create uh, a surface like that. And we'll click OK. Now I want to start to create my cap surfaces to fill this in because the ultimate goal here is to make a watertight solid for 3D printing. So from this solid, I'm going to take away this, what used to be the front surface, by typing in the command extract surface and selecting that surface. I will hit enter first and then press the delete key. Okay, so now we can cap this void 
using surface edge curves and we can have two three or four curves that will create a surface so in our case it's one two three enter and that creates a cap surface and we can orbit to the other side and do the same thing surface edge curves in this case we have one two enter and now I'm going to join these surfaces together into one closed poly surface. And I'm going to do that by selecting them all and typing in join, enter. And we'll look in our command line and we'll see four surfaces join into one closed poly surface. So now I can create a more organic form by using some trim operations. So first thing I want to do is I want to draw a curve in elevation and I'll draw it on this right elevation so I can type in C plane enter and this time I'll use surface and it's looking for the surface to orient my C plane to and I'll pick that one and now it wants an origin which will be the lower left of that surface and a positive X which will be the lower right and now I can use my control point curve to just draw a freeform curve across the top of that solid and I can extrude that curve by typing in extrude curve select that curve enter and pick a distance as long as it passes through the solid and now I can use that as a cutting plane by typing in trim enter select cutting objects be the surface enter select the object to trim which will be the solid okay and it trims that nicely Now, if I was to delete that cutting plane, you see that the solid is not a solid anymore. It's hollow and it's missing a top. So if I control Z, I'm going to continue to trim, trim this top surface. So I'll type in trim, enter, and my cutting edge this time will be what was once the solid, enter and then I'm going to trim the cutting surface deselect that so you can see that better let's join these surfaces together by selecting them and typing in join it says two surfaces join into one closed poly surface now this is back to being a solid so now we'll go back to what we learned at the beginning of this tutorial, which is filleting the edge. So I'll click on my fillet edge, select my edge, enter. I can then control the radius. Get a preview of that, enter. And I can do the same with this edge enter okay and so I'll type in the command mesh and I'll click on preview and I can up the polygon count and I'll click OK. I can type in the command check mesh and select it, enter. And it says this is a good mesh. I don't have any degenerate faces. I don't have any zero length edges. Uh, most importantly, I don't have any naked edges. So this is ready for 3D printing.